So I recently got hold of a, uh, another one of these, uh, this style of antenna off eBay and uh, again it's got a directional antenna in the middle and the two uh, rubber duck dipoles at the side but uh, I, a few of you did actually say to get hold of the uh, Signal King version of this antenna and the ad itself did have the picture of the Signal King one and also mentioned in the uh, description that it was Signal King but when it turned up it's uh, got a French manufacturer's name in the middle there and uh, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that but uh, it's definitely not the uh, Signal King one that was in the uh, advertisement itself and again when I actually came to start filming this the uh, two rubber duck dipole antennas at the side weren't even connected. And here is the uh, little Wi-Fi card that comes with this uh, antenna and uh, it did have two uh, lengths of coax actually going off to the sides here that was actually soldered in place and one big mass of uh, cables to the one solder point on this card and uh, I did think uh, I'd found one that uh, was connected up but when I took the uh, actual cover off the dipole antenna there was nothing inside just a length of coax actually terminating about there. Now I do actually like as I've said previously the form factor of the uh, case itself and this one does have a uh, biquad element here in the uh, panel for the directional antenna. I thought that uh, you know instead of actually putting a uh, Wi-Fi card in here if we could turn it into uh, a router and have the uh, two omnidirectional uh, antennas at the sides here and the uh, main directional panel antenna you could actually position that to uh, where you want some extra signal strength in your house so let's say uh, you want to do uh, some work in the conservatory on your laptop and the uh, signal strength's a little bit poor in there you could just actually turn the uh, panel by quad on this to uh, actually aim it into the conservatory and uh, that way you'd have a good connection and you know anywhere in your house if uh, you want uh, a good signal just uh, actually uh, turn it and position the uh, by quad element here to actually face the uh, area that you want some uh, extra Wi-Fi signal strength. So when we have a look at the case itself we've got quite a uh, bit of room in the base here and uh, this originally housed this uh, little Wi-Fi card there but uh, we have got a bit of space there in the bottom and uh, you know little uh, pocket size uh, nano routers have become extremely popular over the last few years and this one is really really tiny I got it off eBay for a tenner and uh, it's uh, Vonets I believe that's how you pronounce it but uh, it's so so small but uh, it will fit quite nicely in the base of uh, this antenna so before we go about actually modding this little nano router then what I'll do I'll uh, actually take it downstairs and switch it on and I'll do a scan with my uh, laptop we're just using its uh, internal Wi-Fi card and antenna and we'll see how good the uh, signal strength is uh, downstairs and then that'll give us a nice yardstick to test it against after we've actually completed the mod so I've got the little router plugged in downstairs and I've left my laptop scanning for a uh, good 10 minutes because what I'm finding here and as you can see on the screen is the uh, signal strength is uh, a little bit up and down it seems to settle around the uh, 60 62 percent mark but um, you know it drops down to uh, almost uh, 30 percent and uh, it's not very stable at all it's uh, a very unstable signal so i've already cracked open the little nano router then there's no screws or anything like that it's just plastic tabs around the side of the casing and straight away you can see that it's actually got two antennas and they're inverted f style antennas one here and one here so i'm going to get the uh, macro lens on and i'll show you what ha you uh, have to actually remove to actually modify this so we can put two uh, rubber duck dipole antennas on so the component that we need to remove is this very very small capacitor here we need to desolder that so we break the chain that goes along here and then feeds into the inverted f antenna and the reason we need to actually remove this uh, capacitor is because this signal path here that leads directly to the uh, feed point on the F antenna here is uh, designed to match the impedance of this antenna and make it perform slightly better because here 
it's uh, can connected directly to ground and here is the uh, signal uh, element feed going in here so it's not really a uh, good antenna it's nice in a small package like this this is why it's used quite a lot but we're going to be replacing that with a uh, dipole antenna so we need to remove this and solder our signal wire onto this point here and uh, I haven't checked yet but I'm presuming these four pads here are actually connected straight back to ground and it's exactly the same with the other antenna as well we need to remove this uh, little capacitor here and uh, do the same on this side and that way these uh, two antennas will be completely disabled then so before I actually start modifying this board so we can solder some coax onto it what I'm going to do is modify the antenna case itself now because we want uh, access to the power here on the uh, USB um, what I'm going to do instead of drilling holes to actually accommodate that although the USB here is just for power so you could actually replace that with a uh, round DC jack what I'm going to do is cut out a rectangle shape in here and cut out the uh, back of the nano router here on this case and I'm going to actually glue it in position there so I'm not messing around cutting out little uh, you know rectangle and square shapes to accommodate the connectors so I've got that epoxied in place now and I've also had to shave off a uh, small amount of the uh, land socket as well just to lower its profile slightly just so when we come to put the uh, base cover back on it sits nice and flush so I remove that little uh, capacitor there so the signal path to uh, this F antenna is uh, now broken and what I've also done is uh, remove a little bit of the solder mask as well from this trace here just to give me a uh, slightly bigger surface area to actually solder onto and I've also done the same with the uh, second one as well. Now I'm going to use this length of coax here that goes to the uh, biquad directional antenna and I'm going to solder it onto uh, this point here but uh, the other solder point I'm going to actually need to solder two uh, coaxes to that so I can have the two dipole antennas so what I've actually got here is some uh, coax that I've salvaged from a uh, laptop Wi-Fi card and uh, if you actually want to search for this on eBay it's uh, RG178U so this is a lot thinner than uh, this coax because as I say I'm going to have to solder both to uh, this point on this side so I'm going to actually construct the dipoles backwards I'm going to solder the cable on first and then feed the cable up through uh, here itself and then I'm going to uh, make the uh, dipoles on this end so I'm going to be doing it a little bit backwards but I think that'll be the uh, easiest way to actually do this so to hold the board in the correct position in this uh, case here what I've had to do is get a couple of nylon spacers and I've drilled holes through the uh, PCB where the uh, original antennas used to be so I'm not interfering with anything there and uh, I've got the nylon spacers here this one I've had to cut down slightly and this one just happens to be the uh, correct length I've uh, also put a small piece of foam on the uh, LAN socket here and uh, now I've got it raised up so it's at the right level to fit into the board and then the uh, legs themselves I'll attach to the uh, plastic of the case with some epoxy so I've got some epoxy on the ends of the legs there and on the foam itself so I'm going to actually put it in place now and a little trick that you can do to make sure it's all lined up when you're doing something like this is get the USB cable and actually insert it into the port itself and that will help hold it in place as well until the epoxy is set so I've soldered the coax in place on this side of the board the uh, single coax there that leads up to the uh, biquad element and the uh, two coaxes for the uh, dipole antennas what I've done I've uh, twisted the centers together and soldered that in place and also the uh, outer braid there so I can tack that down onto uh, those two solder points there because they definitely do connect down to ground and this I can solder onto that uh, trace that I've scratched away there and I've already pre-tinned it so I'm going to solder the main signal wire down first then so I'm just using a uh, soldering iron with this size tip you might think uh, you'd be better off uh, soldering one of those really thin tips but they are useless so I've got uh, this already pre-tinned up so a little bit of solder on the end of my tip here and hopefully just add a little bit of heat in there get that solder to flow and then it'll make contact so 
So that's soldered in place now. So what I'm going to do is just bend round that outer braid a little bit and solder that down onto those two points. So we'll try that again because when I actually check the continuity we had a bridge in there so I've uh, actually made the track a little bit longer scrape some more solder mask of that uh, signal track there so I'm going to solder that in place first bend it around again and then a little bit of heat then just bend that outer braid around snip a little bit of that off then a little bit of heat and hopefully that's now soldered in place so that's all the coax soldered in place now and uh, as you can see I've put a couple of zip ties in the corners there to hold them down just to add a little bit of strain relief because there's not a great deal of solder holding uh, either of these in place and uh, on this side I've just drilled a, uh, another hole through the actual uh, old antenna there so we can uh, tie that one down. So next we're going to need to make our dipole antennas now because we've used uh, thinner coax in this modification I actually want a, a piece of tubing which is narrower than uh, this one here that I've uh, made with some slightly thicker coax. Now you can get your uh, metal tubing from one of these uh, cheap telescopic aerials. So if you open it out, we're actually going to be using this uh, much thinner tubing here to make the body of our dipole antenna. Now I've already done the opposite side already. I've got my uh, piece of tubing here, which is uh, 25 millimeters long. And I've got uh, some of the uh, inner core of the coax exposed here from the top of the tubing, which is also 25 millimeters long. So I'm going to show you how to prepare the uh, coax so we can actually solder this uh, piece of tubing on. I'm uh, not going to go into too much detail, but I'll link in a few videos where I've shown in detail how to do this previously. It's really, really simple and one of the most simplest antennas you can actually make. So first of all what you want to do is cut away some of this insulator to expose the uh, first layer of braid underneath there and uh, what you want to remember is that this uh, actual antenna is uh, 25 quarter wavelength and 25 millimeter quarter wavelength so you want a little bit more than 50 millimeters to actually play with which we've actually got here but uh, we also want to remember that this antenna is going to bend upwards because it's got this uh, elbow joint here so we need to leave a uh, little bit of slack down there just to uh, take that slack up when you actually uh, bend it up on its elbow joint so that's something you've got to remember with uh, this one here so we can actually use the uh, piece of tubing to help us measure out where we're going to strip back the coax so I'm going to have it uh, about there so I'm going to strip back all this uh, insulator all the way from the top of the uh, tubing here all the way to the end so now that we've exposed the outer braid, what I'm going to do is cut away the uh, braid that we don't actually want. So I've pushed it down a little bit just to form this little uh, bobble of uh, braid here so we can actually solder that into our tube. So I'm going to cut all this braid away from here down to the end here because we don't actually need that. We just want this little bobble to actually uh, solder around the top of the tube. So now that we've cut away the uh, excess braid I'm going to feed the tube down the line now and uh, another point to note is uh, remember you need to prepare your tube as well where you're going to solder so you need to get a little bit of emery paper and clean off some of that chrome and also uh, clean it up a little bit on the inside as well just so the solder will flow around there. So what you want to do then is push the tube over the top of that braid and where the top of the tube is it should just start to stop about there and what we can do is actually flow some solder all the way around there and we'll have a good connection between that braid and this piece of tubing. So that's the tube soldered in place I just flowed a, a little bit of solder around the top there just make sure that uh, you kind of do it in stages you don't want to do it all at once because this dielectric here is uh, quite uh, sensitive and it uh, does not like excessive heat. 
So all that's left to do now then is cut the uh, inner core down to uh, 25 millimeters to match the tubing and that's the dipole finished. So the metal base has gone back on no problem at all but um, if uh, you actually want to use this ethernet cable uh, port here you may want to cut out a little notch in the uh, metal base itself or if you've got a uh, ethernet cable where the little tab is actually broken off it should uh, slip in there no problem at all. So to give this a test then what I've decided to do because we tested it first before we modified it so it gives it a good baseline to see how powerful that little nano router was I'm going to uh, do one test with uh, the directional bicord antenna pointing away from me here in the lab so I'm going to have it po pointing out to the uh, garden again downstairs exactly where I uh, placed it on the first test and then we'll do a uh, second test with the uh, bicord antenna pointing inwards directly at me in the lab just so we get an idea of uh, what our modifications have actually done to the nano router if it's actually improved it in any way and what kind of difference this directional antenna makes to the router so I've had it uh, scanning here for uh, 10 minutes just like I did on the first one just to see if there's any uh, big dropouts we're still getting one or two little uh, dips in the signal but I think that's more to do with the fact that it does get a little bit warm I don't think it's anything to do with the uh, actual antennas but as you can clearly see there we're getting a uh, decent signal up in the 80% uh, mark so uh, it's a big improvement over the original dipole antennas. So let's do a second test then where I've got the uh, directional bicord antenna actually pointing at me here in the lab. So this time then the directional bicord antenna is pointing directly at me in the lab here and not out into my garden away from me and as you can see it's uh, well over uh, the 90% mark so it's kind of hovering around 93-94% uh, but we're still getting those uh, little dips every now and again but uh, as I said I think that's to do with the uh, router itself I don't think it's anything to do with the uh, antennas it does get a little bit hot so it turned out to be uh, quite a nice little build as I say I purchased this thinking it was going to be a, a, a signal king antenna with the dipoles connected and I did start filming and I was a little bit disappointed so I actually scrapped that idea and as a uh, little uh, router with the uh, two dipole antennas and a directional antenna it's turned out uh, rather well I quite like this now unfortunately when I uh, purchased this uh, Vonettes uh, mini router I didn't do a uh, lot of checking I all I did was uh, actually have a look at the uh, uh, internal photographs on the uh, interwebs just to see if I could modify it and uh, unfortunately you can't run this as a uh, repeater or anything else you can only run it as a uh, router but uh, as I say as a router I think it's uh, improved no end that uh, signal strength and I don't know why more manufacturers don't actually include at least one directional uh, antenna with, with their routers nowadays I think that would be a uh, good selling point for a uh, manufacturer to actually do that and another thing that I thought uh, would be useful to actually do with something like this is if you uh, find a uh, nano router that's got a USB uh, connection on the back that you can actually uh, stick a uh, dongle in you know for your 3G or 4G then uh, it would make it a uh, nice portable little router to actually uh, take on holiday with you or you know if you're uh, caravan or camping you can set up your own little hotspot in uh, quite a uh, wide area and uh, get good signal strength running it off a uh, sim card so that's something else you could probably do with uh, something like this and again if anybody has uh, come across any sellers on uh, Banggood or Deal Extreme that uh, just sell the uh, plastic cases for these I'd be really really interested because uh, I have got a few ideas that we could actually do with this case they are a, a nice case even if you find one that uh, just has this uh, panel uh, enclosure here and no dipole antennas you know for a, a single biquad element this is actually a good case to actually put it in so again if you did uh, enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them and uh, yes this will be given away to one of my uh, patrons at the end of the month so uh, if you're interested in supporting me there I'll uh, put a link in the uh, description and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one